I wanted to talk about Secure 2.0. The first thing we're going to talk about is the timeline for our amendments that are going to be required. Most of our plans will be required to be amended uh, by G uh, December 31st of 2026, except some of our tax exempt and union plans will have until the end of the 2028 plan year. Governmental and 403Bs will have until the end of the 2029 plan year to amend their plans for the Secure 2.0 provisions. I also wanted to let you know that we use an outside vendor to prepare our documents called ASC. They will not have our Secure 2.0 amendments ready until at least the fourth quarter of this year. So if you wonder why we're not getting a jump on those, that's why we need to make sure we've got the approved language. In the interim, we will be administering your plans by the elections that the defaults that Definity has selected as well as any overrides that you may want to select on your part. Um, Definity has put together a internal committee where we've selected some defaults for some of the optional guidance. We've really tried to take into account um, the guidance that's been provided already as well as our record keeper partners uh, readiness. And we've made some other considerations as well. We are continuing to monitor any guidance as it comes out to see if it may make some of these provisions more palatable or interesting to you as our sponsors. And we will communicate as that guidance is received. And if you have any questions on any of these, please reach out to your RPC and we will be um, gathering information and making data available. We also have a great resource available um, with our Definity defaults on our Definity website. I wanted to show that to you real quickly here. Hopefully I can get my technology to work. So if we look at our website, there is a uh, resources page. This is our Secure 2.0 provisions web uh, availability site. This goes over the mandatory provisions, which we'll talk about shortly. There's also a page for op or a section for optional provisions. And here you'll see if you want to select something different, you check click here, it would take you to this page. And you'll fill out your name, information, the plan name, your email, and then you'll select the provision that you would like to override. And this will, uh, so then you'll submit it to us and our document team, which we'll speak to you shortly, will save all these elections. And when we restate your plan for secure, these are the elections that we will use. Um, some of the provisions that we're using that are optional as a default, we're going to default into a yes uh, for would be increasing in the dollar limit for mandatory distributions, such as a cash out. Currently, the cash out limit is $5,000. Secure 2.0 allowed us to increase that to $7,000. So for those of you who are currently using the $5,000 limit, the default will be to increase it to $7,000. But if you're using something less than $5,000, such as $3,500, we will keep you at the lower amount unless you tell us otherwise. Um, another thing that we're defaulting to is employee certification for hardship distributions. This will allow an employee to certify that they meet the hardship definition requirements without providing documentation to you as the plan sponsor. They'll have to say that it's being provided on a type of need that's uh, immediate and heavy financial need, not in excess of the amount needed uh, required to satisfy the need. Um, the employer has the discretion to require proof of the hardship if they want to, but there's no longer an obligation to do so. I wanted to point out that our 316 clients will not be adopting self-certification. Part of our 316 services is to collect and review this documentation for you, and we want to make sure we continue to offer that service. So 316 clients will not be doing self-certification. Um, this will also depend on how our record-keeping partners are working with certifications and we will likely be updating our internal forms. I know we will, and I'm sure some of our sponsors will be, our record keepers will be doing the same. Uh, we are also defaulting into higher catch-up limits from age 60 to 63. Um, this will go up to the greater of $10,000 or 150% of their regular catch-up limit for the 2025 plan year for employees who are at ages 60 to 63. After 2025, the increased catch-up contribution will be indexed for inflation. We're actually not sure if this provision is optional. IRS hasn't said either way, but Definity is going to utilize it whether or not it's optional or not. If it's optional, our default will be yes, unless you tell us otherwise. If, it, if you do select no and we find out it is required, we will let you know that as well. So again, our default will be to accept the higher limits. Uh, another one is the uh, retirement funds with 
with regard to qualified federally declared disaster areas. As many of you know, now when FEMA declares a disaster area, IRS often comes out with guidance as to how to handle distributions and loans with regard to those disasters. This puts it as part of the code so that those IRS proclamations are no longer required. Definity's default will be to allow those larger distributions and loans to the extent that a FEMA disaster area has been declared. It allows a $22,000 uh, distribution to be taken, which is not subject to the 10% penalty. And the participant can take it into their income over three years. They can repay it to the plan so they don't lose the tax deferred status of those funds, assuming they repay it. If the plan does allow for loans, they can take a loan up to 100% or 100% of their balance or $100,000, whichever is lesser. Uh, again, that will be our default to allow for that. Another thing that Divinity is permitting, and this is something that you may or may not take advantage of, if you wanted to amend your plan to increase a benefit retroactively, that can be done under Secure 2.0, but there are limitations. For example, if a 401k plan wanted to adopt a profit sharing provision that it did not currently have, and they wanted to do that in May of 2024, they could, but they also could do it as late as the tax filing deadline for the plan sponsor. Please note, you can't go back and retroactively amend to add for matching contributions. The thought behind that being is the participant really should understand what their matching contribution formula is when they make their deferral elections. And the DFINITY default says this is allowed if the amendments are prepared after the applicability date. Since we're after 1231-2023, provided the requirements are met, we will permit this. And you'll have to speak with your RPC about that, but this would be something great that we could do for uh, participants and plan sponsors to increase benefits in our plans. Some things that we are not defaulting into would be optional treatment of matching or non-elected contributions as Roth contributions. One thing Secure 2.0 said was that to the extent I have pre-tax matching and defer or matching and profit sharing contributions in my plan, I could elect to include those in my income and treat them as Roth. We're not going to offer that at the outset because a lot more guidance is needed in this area. And a lot of record keepers aren't anxious to start offering this option to all of our plans. So I think it's something that we'll want to see more guidance on. If you want to do this, this is something that you could override should you choose to do so. Another one is a topic that's gotten a lot of uh, attention in the press is student loan payments, treating them as elective deferrals for matching purposes. In this instance, if you had a, an employee making student loan repayments, those repayments could be treated as plan deferrals and the matching contributions of the employer could be matched against the uh, repayments. There's a lot of operational questions as to how that would work if it's self-certification by the participant. So that's something that we've not opted to offer at this time. Again, if you want to offer that to your plan, you would fill out that checklist that we've provided. Some other things that we're not offering at the outset, Secure 2.0 added a military spouse retirement plan credit. We were not permitting that. Withdrawals for certain emergency expenses, that's not something we were going to offer as well. Um, exemption for certain automatic portability transactions, we're not permitting that. Uh, there's something that's been uh, created by Secure 2.0 called Pension Link Emergency Savings Accounts, which would allow you to take some money out of your plan, assuming one of these pension emergencies occurred. Um, but that's not going to be part of our defaults. Another one is domestic abuse distributions. If you're the victim of domestic abuse, you could take money out of your plan provided you met the requirements. That's not a default we're going to permit. Again, you could override that if you wish. Uh, qualified long-term care distributions, currently not something that we're gonna offer as a default. Uh, there are some mandatory provisions in Secure 2.0 that I wanted to review with you. Uh, Secure 2.0 is increasing the age for required minimum distributions. Currently, it used to be 70 and a half and then went up to 72, and now it's 73 starting 1-1-23. It's going to continue to increase till we get up to age 75 starting in January 1st of 2033. There's been some changes to the family attribution rules. This may not affect a lot of you. It's really an issue for small employers. Uh, it really has to do with attribution purposes for a control group and affiliated service group rules. To the extent that there's attribution only due to state community property rules, that's going to be disregarded. So if I own 100% of my dental practice and my husband owns 100% of his physical uh, therapy practice, 
if we're in a community property state, we would have to cover each other's employees. And that will no longer be the case. The same is true of if we have any attribution due to a minor child. So I've got my dental practice. My husband has his physical therapy practice and we have a toddler. Previously, we would have been considered a control group because of our toddler being under the age of majority. So that rule has since gone away. One rule that's getting a lot of attention and I hope you're all paying attention to it is this long-term part-time employee rule. Uh, beginning with secure two, Secure 1.0, we needed to start tracking hours for our long-term part-time employees. As you'll recall, those are employees who work 500 or more hours in a plan year. Secure 1.0 required three consecutive plan years of 500 hours. Secure 2.0 reduced that requirement to two consecutive plan years of 500 or more hours. So, and that's effective for 2024. And it also extends the long-term part-time coverage rules to 403B plans. So those plans will have to comply with that as well. And we'll be doing a lot of communications regarding long-term part-timers. And I know there's articles on our website if you have questions. Um, there is going to be a mandatory automatic enrollment requirement for new 401k plans with 11 or more participants. Uh, <clears throat> a beginning um, in the 2025 plan year, if there were any plans that were put in at the end of 22 through the beginning of the end of 2024 that did not include automatic enrollment, those plans will be in, need to be amended to add that provision. Automatic enrollment is when you require a participant to defer to the plan uh, <clears throat> at a rate of at least 3%, and then they'll increase annually to of a, at least 1% more. It can't go up to more than 15%. And remember, those participants may always opt out of that uh, provision. Uh, Roth catch-up contributions, this is something that we have to comply with. For any um, employer employees who make more than $145,000 in FICA wages in the prior calendar year, their catch-up contributions will need to be made on a Roth basis as opposed to a pre-tax basis. Um, we also will be per permitting uh, simple IRA plans to convert to a 401k plan mid-year. So if you're current, currently sponsoring a simple IRA and you want to consider moving to a 401k plan, you used to have to wait till the end of the calendar year, but beginning this year, you'll be able to change mid-year should you choose to do so. Um, if you have questions about any of the provisions we've reviewed here, please be sure to keep an eye on our secure resources on infinity.com. Additional guidance will be issued by their service. Anything, and anything we discussed here, we will make sure we communicate to you either through our website or through your Definity dis dispatch. Uh, Here's the thing again about if a plan sponsor wants something different than our default, you can either let your RPC know or you could um, go to the website and submit that form that we reviewed earlier. And again, these uh, submissions will be used by our document team when amending their plans, your plans for Secure 2.0, according to the deadlines we discussed earlier. That's all I have for you today. I appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thank you, Betsy. Before you go, there are some questions and we do have a little bit of time here. Okay. Um, I do want to point out one of the things that you mentioned, of course, I'm really grateful that you did because we spent some time and energy on it. On Definity.com, if you are on Definity.com and you go to the resources tab and choose uh, Definity um, Secure 2.0, you will find the resources that Betty, Betsy talked about. So the um, the page that lists all of the defaults and the way that works and the forms, go to definity.com, choose resources, and then select secure, and you'll find that uh, link to the defaults. Um, so Betsy, let me get to some of the questions. Um, Diane had a couple of questions. Maybe it's a couple of Dianes, which is always possible. One is with two ends, one is with one. So that's like Maybe you need to be named Diane to work in the retirement industry space. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Diane says, first one with two ends. Betsy uh, says, will you will administer based on our recommendations, Definity, or your selections before uh, December 31st, 2024. But that's not really making sense because I would have guessed nothing changes until December 31st. So can you maybe go back and talk a little bit about uh, how we're going to be you know, the dates for those kinds of things, when those are going to change? Right. A lot of the different provisions have different effective dates. So yeah. as the effective dates for each provision come into effect, and I think uh, the website will be very helpful for this because it does go through the provisions of the effective dates. So if you're unsure of the effective dates for each, that's where I would refer you to. 
And that's only when the changes will be made. And the default will be the definitive default unless you tell us otherwise. And then we can definitely change uh, your election as we move forward. And remember, we're in good faith operational compliance at this point. IRS has, has really allowed us to have some latitude when it comes to making elections and operating until the amendments are actually required. So don't worry that the definitive default is going to lock you into something long-term. We can make changes as we move forward. To yeah. extent we don't cut back any participants benefits, which I don't think we would. No, that's that's great to, to know. That kind of gives us so many of the provisions that came out are still kind of under a, a review and there's still some guidance we're waiting on. So this is our best effort to say, okay, based on what we know right now, this is how we're going to operate. But um, if you have questions about your plan, uh, plan sponsor, talk to your RPC and they can uh, get with Betsy about any other uh, changes that you want to make. Uh, so let's go to the other Diane. Um, she had a question about the uh, terminal illness provision. That was not necessarily one of the provisions that you included in the list of, of ones that we've reviewed. Do you have any information on that? Let me see what she says something else. Um, even even uh, before information is available, we would provide more details on it, but um, it's not something that can be elected right now as it stands. So, but do you have any more information on the terminal illness provision? The terminal illness provision allows a participant to take funds out of their plan once they're diagnosed with a terminal illness. And the thing is, I think we need some guidance. I've heard someone's need to, supposed to have a uh, projected uh, uh it's really difficult to get into this. You know, their lifespan is expected to end within the next 12, seven to 12 months. But I mean, there's some guidance we need from IRS and it allows them to take money from the plan without a huge tax penalty. Um, there's not a lot of guidance out there. I think it's something that a lot of plan sponsors are going to want to add, but there's also a lot of situations where the participant can get their money out today without you know, for medical expenses or something like that. So if you're unsure about that one, we can definitely work with you. There's not been anything we've put out specifically with regard to the terminal illness distributions, but that's something that we can offer if we have a lot of plan sponsors who definitely want to, but it's a nice provision. And it's just, it's difficult for plan sponsors to get involved in participants medical situation. So, you know, I think that's probably why we didn't jump into that one wholeheartedly. And I wanted to bring up, there's a lot of questions people were asking why we're not jumping into some of the emergency distributions or the withdrawal type things. And I think the thought behind that was Congress and the IRS have been concerned with leakage from retirement plans. So many people taking money out of their plans as distributable events come up that we want to make sure these plans are really used for retirement benefits. While we understand some participants may need it on an ongoing basis, that's not really the intent behind the retirement plan itself. So to the extent we can find another type of distribution, I think that's the way we're going to lean towards. But again, with a terminal illness, that's something that we can definitely address with you as we restate. So sure. make sure you speak with your RPC. Yes, right. always, always. We will we'll keep saying that, right? Always, if you have questions, connect with your RPC and they will get with Betsy for other questions. Uh, let's see. I do have two quick questions. I'm watching time. I am going to see a little bit of your time, Michelle, uh, our next presenter. Um, so uh, Aaron wants to know about the highly paid individuals. Um, so highly paid individuals have to do catch up in Roth 457 versus pre-tax? The, uh, for folks making over $145,000 in the prior year, their catch-up contributions in the current year Will have to be made on a Roth basis. So that regard that applies to both 457, 401k, I mean anything that allows for catch-ups. Pretty much if they have a catch-up contribution, we'll have to allow for the Roth catch-up for those making under forty-five thousand dollars. So keep that in mind. It's something that uh plan sponsors or record keepers are gonna have to be prepared for. Because uh -huh. currently a lot of I don't think a lot of participants defer uh catch-ups on a Roth basis, but I mean it, it does make sense. Yeah, I was just thinking about my own. Here we go. Let's. Uh, so Valerie has a question, um, and I did want to make sure we got to this because we're going back to the question about Definity's defaults on Secure 2.0. Her question is, if we do not make any selections on the website, will Definity defaults still take effect? Yes. 
That's right. Right. So the only time you would need to go to the Definity Faults uh, page and review those is if you think you might want to do something different than what you have outlined here. Yes. Correct. And that is always true. You can talk to your RPC and they will uh, coordinate that with you um, and, and get that done. Good. Yep. Anything else, Betsy? I don't think so. I think those are good questions. Yes, they were. Thank you so much, team. Um, and uh, thank you, Betsy, for participating today. At the thank you for your time. Yeah, really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye.